um, the Commission could do in order to assist Bulgaria in case uh, Bulgaria needs help um, with border management and, and Greece. Uh, what I can say is that uh, we act on request by the member states, so there are different uh, possibilities of support available depending on the needs. Uh, in case of Bulgaria, um, the most obvious strands would be uh, financial or assistance from the European Border and Coast Guard Agency, Frontex, in operational terms. I can recall that um, since 2015 we have already provided over uh, 300 million euro to Bulgaria under both the Asylum and Migration Fund and the Internal Security Fund for migration management purposes. And currently I believe there is approximately 70 members of staff from Frontex on the ground in Bulgaria. And of course, Bulgaria is, uh, is very welcome to request uh, further support. And I, I think the same applies to, to Greece. Mm -hmm. There was also a broader question about uh, the EU's preparedness for any possible um, large-scale um, inflow of, uh, of, of people, more, uh, a large amount of people coming uh, into the EU. And on that, I think Peter already provided some uh, elements of, uh, of answer. You know, we will not engage into uh, speculation about any uh, scenarios uh, of, um, of different um, types of um, large-scale movements of people. Uh, what I can say, uh, however, is that um, we do have a very wide range of different uh, possibilities of, of assistance and action available. Uh, over the last years, we have made uh, huge strides in, uh, in terms of migration management and border protection. We've been working together with member states uh, in order to put in place a, the building blocks of a, of a sustainable way of managing migration in the EU. Uh, I can mention a, a few important aspects of that. We have built a new European border and coast guard, which is currently being reinforced uh, with, with 10,000 border guards uh, in order to help uh, protect external borders. We have mobilized unprecedented level, levels of funding and funding possibilities within the EU to support member states in need. We have developed um, an approach consisting on, in creating reception centers for, uh, for, for people coming in, this hotspots approach to help countries of first entry uh, manage arrivals. We have worked with um, external partners in order to provide support uh, for refugees and migrants in, uh, in countries uh, when they need it and develop safe and legal pathways uh, for countries to come in, uh, for, for people to come into Europe. So the result is that we are uh, currently, uh, we, we currently have these new building blocks and we are better equipped than ever in order to, to deal with any, um, any possible events should they arise. Uh, but of course, um, we continue to work and we have started work on uh, new, the new pact on migration and asylum, uh, which uh, will also bring additional capabilities to the EU. So there are, uh, there is a number of different possibilities. Uh, we would act based on the needs and based on the requests uh, from member states. Uh, but as I said, it is, uh, it is not the right time to start speculating about what, what can happen. Thank you. Georgi, you have a follow-up question. Thanks, Robert. Uh, if you can uh, tell us uh, what would be uh, the EU policy uh, in a situation where uh, migrants who have lived several years in Turkey, I think in good conditions, I don't think uh, they f they um, are threatened, uh, but still they want to, to go further west. At the moment when they will uh, arrive to the border fence, there is a border fence at the Bulgaria-Turkish border, they will probably try to pass across it, which is not impossible. And then what? I mean, uh, uh, is Bulgaria allowed to push them back? Also having in mind that uh, uh, they are safe in Turkey, that they are not threatened by the Turkish authorities. So uh, can the Bulgarian authorities just push them back, not, not allow them on, on Bulgarian territory? Or should they welcome them and bring them to asylum centers and so on. What's the policy? Thank you very much for your question, Georgi. I noticed that your question uh, contained the words what would and then if this happened and then they would probably want to do that. So we are talking here about a highly hypothetical question uh, in a scenario that may or may not happen, which makes it extremely difficult for uh, Adalbert to give the position of the institution uh, to you today on that. He can tell you something uh, possibly uh, on, a, on a more
more neutral uh, uh, note about what is in the rules, but he will not speculate on the possibility of being in such a scenario that you mentioned. What is in the rules? Um, so the, this, is, this is an area where looking at uh, every individual case is complicated because you have uh, the overlapping uh, legal orders of the, of the European Union and also uh, under international law, the European Convention of Human Rights. From the, uh, and of course the operational um, uh, capabilities, the operational, uh, the, the operational way in which border controls are conducted are very much in the hands of member states uh, in terms of what infrastructure they put at the border and how exactly they conduct uh, the uh, different procedures at the border. Now, um, the, um, the in, in general terms, uh, under European Union law, there is uh, first of all, the Charter of Fundamental Rights, which includes the right, uh, the right to asylum as well as uh, protection against uh, refoulement. There, is a, uh, there are provisions on, in the Asylum Procedures Directive, which uh, includes the obligation for member states to provide access to the asylum procedure. Uh, and there are also provisions in the Schengen Borders Code, uh, which um, refer to the, um, the principle of non refoulement and equally to, the access to, to access to international protection. However, as I said, in every individual case, um, the situation uh, needs to be looked at individually. And therefore, um, I cannot really comment on the specific scenario that, that you referred to. No, it would not be appropriate. Uh, are there any more questions for Adalbert? Is he here? Is it for Adalbert? Yes, please go ahead. Hello, thank you. Joe Barnes from the Daily Express. Um, you referenced the 10,000 Frontex officials that are due to be hired, um, I believe, by 2027. So I was wondering, could you give us an update on how many have been hired to date? Because um, I presume a lot of that hinges on the next MFF as well. Um, and are there spare Frontex officials available to be sent to the Greek-Turkish border, to the Bulgarian-Turkish border um, at this current time? Thank you. Right. I, I think it's better to ask this question to the agency, to be frank, because I think they will have much more up-to-date figures. They have uh, currently started the first batch of recruitment, and um, the, 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 um, the objective is, I understand, to have first um, um, officials on the ground uh, next year. Uh, however, as I said, for, for details, I think it's better to speak to uh, Isabella Cooper, who's the uh, spokesperson of the agency. To avoid to give you second-hand information. It's also a question for Adalbert. Yes, please go ahead. I've got two questions. One's uh, like a more simple one. Um, how many people, <laughs> hopefully, uh, how many people came over the Turkey-EU border last year and how many of them were sent back? Um, and then the second question is, looking to the future, uh, my understanding is that the Turkish-EU um, agreement is going to have to be, uh, well, it expires at the end of 2021. Is that correct? Um, 2020? So, sorry, yeah, the end of this year. Um, uh, no? Okay, could you talk me through how it works then? Or what happens when the money runs out, basically, is my question. Well, thank you. I think Adalbert can attempt to provide you an answer on the numbers, but frankly, I would admire him profoundly if he had those numbers in his head already. And in case he doesn't, uh, which I wouldn't be upset for, he would come uh, towards you with the answers after the midday briefing. I think I will have to count on something else to earn Dana's admiration today. <laughs> Good. So you will have the answer after the midday briefing. <laughs> um, the other question would actually more be for Peter in relation to the Turkish deal. Uh, so that's why uh, I'm opening the floor for additional questions for Adalbert before going back to the agreement with Turkey. Maria, it's for Adalbert. Thank you. It's uh, actually a follow-up on, I mean, you mentioned the uh, hotspots, and I think we can agree that has not been a famous success. Um, are you um, worried about the situation on the Greek islands? There are still protests from local people. There are still a lot of tensions uh, also uh, regarding the, the, the projects of the, the government to build. Um, closed facilities, uh, how, how can you um, act? I mean, I know you're going to say that 
it's based on uh, what Greece asks for, but still, I mean, this situation has been <laughs> worsening and worsening. Uh, so do you intend to take a different um, approach? Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria. So uh, to start with, I, I do not think that we can agree that uh, the approach has not been um, a, a success. I think our evaluation of um, what uh, of this approach is is much more nuanced. Uh, you know, it's it's operating in very difficult circumstances, but it is providing um, a, a way to um, manage migration that um, that has been um, uh, that has provided uh, a lot of assistance to the member states that that require it. So um, we would not have this uh, this negative evaluation of the approach as such. Now, as regards the situation on the islands. Um, we are, of course, uh, following it very, very closely. Uh, I think we have said numerous times that we, uh, we are concerned about the, the situation of the persons who are uh, on the islands, the, person who, uh, the, the migrants and, and the refugees who are there. Um, we are um, supporting the Greek government's efforts in order to address the situation on the islands through accelerated procedures and also through measures such as uh, appointing an, a coordinator for unaccompanied minors. Uh, we remain in very close contact and dialogue with the Greek authorities in order to discuss with them the, the best ways in which we can uh, support the, the Greek government's efforts. And of course, we are, we are following the situation closely. With regards to the, um, to the security and public order related measures that the Greek government is, uh, is taking, as well as uh, the specific issue of the construction works uh, that, that you raised, this is very much something that's in the hands of the Greek authorities and, is, um, and relates to their specific competence. And therefore, um, I think it would be better to, to check with them. Georgi, also for Adalba. Yeah, uh, more on Greece. Uh, the Greek uh, Prime Minister uh, said Greece is closing uh, its border because of the coronavirus. And, and my God, I hope no 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 other spokesperson will be needed for that but uh, still i'm i'm, I'm asking uh, is is that okay i mean uh, closing the border uh, because of the coronavirus uh, he has an argument of course uh, it's because uh, some migrants may come from iran and uh, we know that uh, uh, iran has many cases of coronavirus uh, basically migrants coming from uh, Afghanistan and so on, uh, cross through Iran, then can end up uh, in, on European soil. That's why he's closing the border. Um, is there any reaction on, on the EU side? And is it OK to close the border because of coronavirus? There is a reaction on the EU side, and that Albert will provide it. Indeed. And um, let, let me maybe clarify, uh, to start with, that from our understanding, the um, the, the announcement or the declaration of Prime Minister Mitsotakis was not about closing the border, um, but it was a declaration that Greece intends to step up border controls at the external border, acting in line with the Schengen Borders Code, uh, and indeed with a reference to, to threats to public health. And again, I, I cannot really um, go into the detail of the health angle, uh, and I think we had abundant discussions on, on border controls and health uh, and the, the outbreak in general, over the last days. But from uh, regarding this specific declaration, uh, we, we took note of this declaration, and also the Prime Minister has informed the Commission of, of this decision. Um, we, of course, support effective border controls um, in line with EU law, and we also can reiterate our readiness to look favorably at any requests for European assistance. Um, the European Border and Coast Guard Agency, so Frontex, uh, already supports Greek authorities in border control duties. Uh, and we remain in close contact with the Greek authorities. Thank you very much, Adalbert. I think we are finished with Adalbert's issues for today. Uh, then uh, there was a pending question um, for Anna in relation to the financial arrangements under the uh, EU uh, agreement with Turkey. Where did the question come from? Sorry. Okay, thanks. Um, so, as you know, um, the facility for refugees in Turkey um, had an operational budget of 6 billion euro, which has been fully mobilized. Um, out of this 6 billion euro, 4.7 has been contracted and 3.2 billion has been dispersed. 
you know that um, this money is uh, intended to provide vital support for refugees and the host communities in Turkey. This is not money for the uh, Turkish government. It's to help assist uh, very vulnerable people, refugees on the ground, and support their local um, their local uh, host communities. Um, we recognise that you know that these needs. Uh, will not go away in the future, and you can expect uh, that the European Union will continue to provide vital support for the refugees. And in terms of, um, uh, you know, in, it, it, we, we cannot go into any more details because, as you know as well, uh, this will all be part of the overall MFF discussions. So it would be in any case premature to, to, to say anything on that. But I think that the EU has made clear that you know that these people have needs on the ground and the EU will continue to support them. Thank you very much. Anna, any other questions for Anna today? Georgi? Well, it's a new question, but I think it makes sense. I mean, uh, it, it's obvious that Turkey does no, no longer abide by its, uh, its uh, commitment, uh, despite the fact that uh, they haven't said so uh, officially. Uh, in case it's clear that Turkey does not uh, anymore uh, follow its commitments uh, under the EU-Turkey statement, uh, uh, is EU money, will, will, con will it continue to flow or will you stop the payments? Um, I think that you started with your own comment about whether and how Turkey uh, is um, uh, basically implementing its commitments. So that's your own comment. It's not our assessment. I think that Peter has amply told you what our position and view is on uh, whether uh, the agreement stands and uh, about what we expect the, uh, our partners to, to do. Uh, and secondly, yes, you didn't use the word if, but you said in case it is which is exactly uh, the hypothetical question that we wouldn't want to engage on today. But again, nice try. Any other questions for Anna? No, thank you very much, Anna. Uh, Virginie is owing us a question about capabilities, and she's delighted to, to take it. Hello. Um, Actually, yes, I'm delighted to take it, and I'm delighted to take it with a bit of delay, because in the meantime, um, the High Representative, uh, Vice President Joseph Borrell, has posted, um, or actually we posted on his behalf, a blog post uh, about uh, just that, where he gives accounts of um, uh, his exchanges during the commission-to-commission uh, -commission meeting. Uh, so, um, on what you said, actually, uh, it was um, uh, Musa Faki, the chairperson of uh, the African Union Commission, that said in his uh, closing remark that the violence and the guns of terrorists that continuously kill civilians and sabotage positive developments um, makes it that we also need uh, guns and arms. So basically, the high representative was echoing uh, these elements. Um, saying that when uh, you face a war, you need to act, um, and um, that if you want to attract investment, um, you need security, and security requires strength, and strength may uh, require arm. As you know, the European Union is not a military union, uh, but we can uh, contribute by training uh, troops, which we do, uh, and we can uh, try, yes, indeed, make sure that uh, they can, um, uh, that we help them and that they are equipped so to properly uh, fight. Um, he made also a reference to the European uh, Peace Facility, which is actually being discussed in the, in the Council, uh, which could help um, to, uh, to provide the needed training uh, and equipment. Thank you very much. I think that Nikolai has a question for you. 